guys, Brandon here with USF1. Just wanted to go over a couple of news stories that happened uh, while we we're uh, like while they're testing and you know two week time period between the, the two races between Bahrain and Russia. Uh, one of them being that uh, there's going to be a couple rule changes um, coming to Formula One um, very soon. Uh, a couple, of them, uh, one of them being Halo is being extinct. It is no longer going to be in testing anymore. They are going to be doing something like a, like a Red Bull Shield, something like this, uh, with Daniel Ricardo. So it look kind of like you know, like similar to like a like a cockpit canopy to like a fighter jet, which uh, I think will probably be safer. You know, that won't uh, hinder their their sight, their line of sight on the track in front of the car. Uh, overall, I am a Formula One purist. I do like to have a head out of the head out of the car. Uh, you know, like. No, like, I guess not necessarily protection, but uh, I do like the like the head being exposed out of the car. As uh, so, yeah, we will be seeing a new design coming shortly, uh, and the Halo is now extinct. Whew. Another one being that probably going to be an extinction of the shark fin and the T wing. I know a lot of people don't like it just because it's not aesthetically pleasing pleasing to them. It doesn't look like an F one car to them. Like, sorry, like just a couple of years ago, they had fins on them. You guys had no, no complaints then. And the cars were just as like, were slower than that, like slower then than they are now. But, uh, overall you, you like, you kind of would have to, uh, in order to do that, they're going to have to raise the rear wing, at least a little bit that has some sort of like back end traction for the airflow to go over the rear wing. Cause it's so low. That's the reason why the shark fin and the T wing are there to help channel the air to the back over the back wheels to give it back wheel traction. But with it being with no shark fin and no T wing in a current design that it is now, with the rear wing being so low, you're gonna have a lot of airflow problems if you don't have any of those variables in there. So you're gonna have to do a little bit more than just hey ban T wings and ban shark fins because I don't like looking at it. Another news, uh. Uh, even though the, you know, like the McLaren, like the Honda engine unit team were very optimistic and very, uh, you know, standoffish on any help with their engine because, you know, they all thought that they could tackle the problem themselves. But as you can see, their engine just keeps failing and failing. So they obviously don't know what they're actually doing in Honda. So they are open to outside sources and the most unlikely of sources has helped has offered a light like at least a little bit of life support and that is Mercedes. Ports have indicated that Mercedes has been approached by Honda. This would be to allow some con con consultancy with regards to their power unit in order to get on top of the issues that plague the efforts of the J Japanese outfit. What also has not gone unnoticed is Mercedes AMG managing director of high performance powertrains Andy Cowell has been talking with high profile members members at McLaren about adding fuel to that speculation. Honda Formula One boss told motorsport.com, actually, we have been doing everything we can do. Uh, we are utilizing every source from outside. From the beginning of March, we are almost changing our organization. I think it works better, but it was too late to modify our development. Of course, it is not easy because engine modifications take time, which is an issue. We have seen some good elements, but still, the whole package is not ready. Uh, I think we can all agree about that. Um, Mercedes somewhat has their like the, the 2017 car uh, at least engine um, down pat they had some like with these new with this new technology you're always gonna have some sort of reliability issues because the technology is so new and you're developing it um, as you can see even like last year even though Mercedes dominated they did have a lot of engine problems um, for instance you know Lewis Hamilton's engine blowing up with uh, you know two laps to go at Sepang uh, which could have got him, you know, like a pretty decent, uh, a pretty decent chance of winning the drivers' championship last year. In other news, Sauber is going to probably be driving a well next year. Will be having a Honda engine as their power unit instead of a Ferrari B spec, um, like they've been usually doing uh, last couple of years. Uh, so, what do you guys think about Sauber having a Honda engine? Kind of feel bad for them. Uh, I'm sure they're going to be getting a lot of money, which, you know, Sauber is always being so small. They always need money uh, to be able to compete. So they even just be in Formula 1, not, not, not necessarily compete, but at least, you know, be on the grid. And at least they finish races more than, you know, like some teams. But overall, they 
it's kind of disappointing to see Sauber going with Honda, um, considering that I always like small teams being competitive and that Honda engine just doesn't seem to be very competitive. Yeah, I take it with a grain of salt. Yeah, Sauber is going to be having a Honda engine, but that just basically means we're going to have another unreliable car, another team that is incredibly slow on the grid, and it'll be disappointing to watch overall. We need more teams in F1, I swear, and more engine suppliers, at least more... At least more, uh, you know, better one. In other news, uh, you also have, uh, there is a, uh, my last news segment is about the Renault team um, and their RS17. As the team has only scored two points in all three 2017 races combined. Really bad. Um, like, even Haas, so we have we have eight, and we have two two-point finishes uh, with Madison and Grosjean separately. But they are going to be bringing a, uh, an upgraded front wing um, to Russia. But that will only be tackling some of the problems. Um, Bob, Bob Bell, the technical director of, Formula, of Renault Formula 1 team, says the RS-17 is not as, well balanced, not as well balanced as we like over a full stint, he said. Well, while it's, you can get away with this the cor um, over the course of qualifying laps, um, where fresh tires can mask the balance issue, the the performance is less consistent when you take take into account the longer runs of race stints. The RS-17 has a somewhat nervous corner entry, followed by mid-turn understeer, followed by a nervous exit, making finding traction a challenge. If we can uh, address these areas, our drivers will have a very effective race car at their disposal. We believe the problems are aero-related, so we're primarily looking for the solution there. Once we have the entry phase of the corner sorted, the rest should follow easily. Uh, I, with how they explained it, you know, like it seems like it, it could be more than just an aero problem. It could be an also like an engine tuning problem. Like if you're having hard, like like if you can't gain traction at uh, of an exit of a corner, that might just mean that you have too much torque in that gear, and you're ha you're developing wheel spin, and you're, you know, can't get grip at the end of a corner if you have wheel spin. Uh, that's Maybe it's just mine. Just I'm just saying it may not be a total aero problem. Could be a combination of both aero and engine. Um, I did post that article on Formula One Armchair Experts, uh, which you will see me on a lot. Uh, Formula One Forever. You will see me there as well. Uh, not as much as Formula One Armchair, but um, yeah, I'm just saying I'm there on Facebook. Uh, not saying you guys have to be or anything like that. You just know, like, if you guys know me, I like to talk about Formula One all the time. I uh, may not always be able to get on camera, but I do like to share articles that I talk about on a routine basis. But uh, uh, that's all I got. This is just a couple news stories that I thought I would share with you guys. You guys probably already know them, but I just want to give you my two cents into each one of those. And uh, sorry if it's already, you know, no news and all that stuff. Everything's already known. There's only like a couple sources that even have Formula One news. I can even talk to them prime, um, directly and be able to get news directly. Uh, I live in the U.S., so that's very hi highly unlikely. So everything's going to be secondary and giving my own opinion, reactions, to, uh, certain things. But just giving my opinion as a Formula One fan. Um, and I like to know a lot of things in general, but I'm not an expert in anything, any of those things. So, but yeah. Just wanted to give you guys a little bit of news stories in case you missed them. But I'm Brandon with USF1. Peace.